I haven't straightened my hair in forever and it makes me look so fucking blonde and what a great day. I'm thinking, bring the blonde off of it. Be great. Hello and welcome back to my channel. The keen eyed of you will notice it is no longer sarcastic fish. I finally actually took the plunge and changed my channel name. I have been debating about this kind of for years actually if I'm honest about it, like for a very long time I've considered changing it since I was about 15. So along with that I thought it was the right time to have an honest chat about YouTube, about my branding, about creative freedom. So that is what we're going to get into today. I was actually kind of sad when I changed my name, like I didn't realise that it was going to mean, so if I didn't, I, I didn't realise it was going to have the emotional weight that it did when I actually changed it and it hit me and I was like, what have I done? Like kind of the first reaction I had was, oh my god, change it back. Like I did get emotional, like I got a bit like teary, I was like, oh, if you read my Twitter, you should read my like tweets from then, I was just like, I was having like a moment. And I think it's also to do with the fact that that name, like I gave my channel that name and I, I said to give myself that name when I was like 14. And so I've grown up with it a lot. And then to then change it, I was like, oh my God, I just changed a huge chunk of my identity. And I was thinking about it like from henceforth, any new people I meet will never have known me as this person. So it was saying like goodbye in a way to a chapter of my life, a big chunk of my life. So I was like, ah. Well, a lot of you won't know that in my personal life, people refer to me as sarcastic fish, as in often it's the first thing people remember about me. They remember sarcastic fish before they remember Emma. People call me fishy at school. I had sarky poisson. People then ended up calling me sarky. We were using it ironically because someone else called me that and I was not okay with it. So we started claiming it back. It was a big chunk of who I am. So to kind of have that like, suddenly just go it was like uh. I have a film channel which is called sarcastic fish films and that is gonna stay as it is I have a trademark on the name sarcastic fish so um because I want to make films that's essentially my production company as well and so that is a business side of things for me which you I have a website it's shit but you can go have a look as well that is now like a brand name in a way um but I want the channel to be more me and I want my films to have that as a company thing because I love the name it's a great name it's remember memorable, memorable, so that, that stays, just, it's not me, and that's kind of the point of this video, is that, like, YouTube branding is so hard, it's incredibly hard, the way YouTube works is in channel niches, think about every single person you've subscribed to, they have a niche, and it took me so long to be aware of this, it's almost mortifying, you either watch beauty bloggers, or you watch vloggers, or you watch people who do video essays or you watch people who do reviews and that's, they all kind of do their own thing. And the problem for me was because I enjoyed all of these things, I kind of wanted to combine that on my channel. But not initially, if you've watched me for long enough, you'll know I actually started out doing comedy sketches. And then that kind of started to become my niche. And then, you know, people started subscribing to me for that. And then that is sort of became my audience, like it became, me making people laugh with things that I did. If you go back to those videos, you'll notice I took a lot of my inspiration from um, YouTubers such as Jenna Marbles, Lily Singh. They were who I drew from creatively a lot. Um, I'm sure you can see that if you watch them. But also because like that was what I enjoyed watching more than anything else. Like I didn't care about particularly you know, serious issues or like, I didn't care, like I just wanted to laugh. And at that point in my life, that's also what I needed. I needed to laugh. And then the idea that I was making other people laugh was so important to me. I remember the comments so clearly when people say, this made me laugh, this cheered me up, this made my day. And I needed that from my audience, from you guys, that is what I needed to help even just sustain me. So that's the avenue I went down. But the fact is I grew up, I got better, I got out of that. I just had to then change. The thing of YouTube is it's very, YouTube can be so personal. I also recently learned that YouTube is ranked as like the most positive like social media, so I'm very pleased about that. You know, but then I was stuck with this audience that had subscribed to me for one thing, but you know, I grew up, like I grew out of that. Like I had to do something else because it wasn't me anymore. Like the last sort of sketchy video I made was like when you just love highlight. And I remember just making that and then like nobody watched it and I didn't really enjoy it. And I was just kind of like, yep, we're done. The prospect of actively rebranding has taken me over a year. 
year and a half, let's say. It's so hard because your entire subscriber base has subscribed to you for one thing, and now you're giving them something else. Like, I lost a lot of subscribers. A lot. If I had just continued doing the comedy thing, I would be a bigger channel than I am now. But I didn't do that. I did what I wanted to do. And I lost a lot of subscribers for that. An awful lot. Like, my subscribers were going up, you know, things were getting really good, and then I changed, and then I'm like, what have I done? My subscribers did not really go up anymore, like it kind of plateaued, so I'd get like 50, 60 a month, and I was okay with that, you know? It's just kind of hard when like you're putting the love in and you're not getting that level of love back. It's not very fulfilling and it's not very satisfying, but what is fulfilling is when you, you know, you get to make things that you enjoy. The problem with YouTube as a creator is the numbers, because you can measure your success so finitely. You can measure it down to the person, to the view, to the second. It's horrible. I don't think you understand the level of like information as creators that we get back, because we, we see everything. We see every single comment, every single view, every single, do not think that like, if you comment on something that we do not see it. I see everything. On my channel, I am omniscient. Nothing can happen on here without me knowing about it. And that's hard. It's so difficult then when you get bogged down in the fact that, oh, you know, people really aren't watching that as much as like they used to. Or people really don't respond to that the way I thought they would. Like if I put something up and it gets like one or two comments, I'm like, what did I do wrong? If I see someone dislikes a video again, I'm like, what did I do wrong? Even if it's like one fucking dislike. And I like to imagine who that person is, but still it's, it's hard and it sucks. It's like to see your success kind of just di oh, disapparate, evaporate, dis dissipate. Sucks. I definitely spoke about that in my vlogs as well, but like it, it hurts. But it was at this point, it was so it's last summer that I think I officially sort of said I was rebranding, is when I started my weekly vlog. And I think that is one of the best decisions I made because I love my vlog. I love my weekly vlog. I recently finished season two, which made me really sad as well. But I love my vlog, it makes me really happy and I think it's something that has helped me like find my niche. And I know, I think a lot of you do enjoy it, please let me know down below what you guys think of it, but I, I love doing it, I really like enjoy it, because I get to just do it at my pace and I can do whatever I like. The problem as well is because I do have so many varied interests that there's never really a cohesive way of doing it on a channel, but in a vlog, I can talk about anything, everything, I can, you know, have my way with makeup, I can talk about films, I can do this and that, and people expect it, it's part of the vlog sort of setup, so that worked perfectly for me, and that was, oh, in terms of fulfillment, A star, so satisfying. And it is great to get to document your life like that. I know that when I'm old, I will be grateful for the fact that I spent so much time and so much effort on this. I'm not paid enough for the amount of time I have spent on my vlogs and on my channel. Oh wait, I'm not paid at all. I know I'm gonna make that joke in the future because internships don't pay any money. So I'm like, you guys don't pay me enough. Oh wait, you don't pay me at all. <laughs> Unpaid internships just are slave labor. Think about that for a second. You probably noticed that my channel has started taking more of a I don't want to say girly, I don't want to say girly. Young women's. I'd say I'm an approach to young women's issues. <laughs> How am I supposed to describe my channel and not say, I make girly content? Someone help, it's a genuine question. And sort of a turn I have now started taking was, I took baby steps with it, which is when I sort of talked about doing this, like, let's talk about series. And I made a couple of videos, like, with that. And then people asked me, like, Emma, are you gonna make any more? Are you planning on doing any more? And I'm like, I don't know. And then I kind of realized that those videos were the ones that were doing really well. And I was like, ooh, I should, ooh, what's, ooh, what's going on? I've always wanted to talk about more serious things. I've always kind of wanted <laughs> to have a political agenda. Why has my lighting just changed? And why, oh, <gasps> that is such a low helicopter. Why can I literally, what the hell? Welcome to London. <laughs> helicopter right outside my window. But you know, the things I want to talk about more is like, I want to talk more about feminism, sex, relationships, friendships, politics, philosophy, film, art, literature, fashion, beauty. There we go. I wrote a list. I'm holding it against the camera. It's like I read all of it. But like, that's what I mean. Like, I want to make young women content. I'm not saying girly. That's bad. Words are important. I am not a girl. 
I'm a woman. But like, it's a question of how do you brand yourself as that? It's difficult. I think the one creator that I watch who I say doesn't have a proper niche is Lucy Moon. I don't know if you watch her also. <laughs> when I've been going on my own channel in my like related section, you, but YouTube suggests she keeps popping up. So I'm quite flat. I'm like, ooh. But I feel like as a creator, she's the only one that really doesn't have a very defined niche. I also watch a lot of Hannah Witten. Hannah Witten does do a lot about sex and relationships. Her channel's brilliant. Both of them are linked below. And those are the videos I enjoyed watching more than others, I realised. And that is kind of what I want to talk about. And I know, as I said, the videos I made like that, you guys liked more. So I was like, oh, so these are videos you like more and I like more. Interesting. You know, and those are the videos that I thought, like, fuck it, I'm gonna do it anyway. Like, the one where Ophelia and I, like, talked about virginity as a concept. Like, I was like, oh my god. Because something I'd wanted to do, but I, I needed a friend for emotional support to be able to really do what I wanted to do. Because I was kind of scared at how it was gonna be received. And it was received very well. It was just so important for me to realise the things I love to make the most, and that was pouring most of my love into, that was being reciprocated back. And I want to thank you for letting me be myself. And honestly, actually, honestly, it's just more that everyone was letting me be myself apart from me. Ah, so dumb that I just like why Emma creative freedom is interesting because like you, if you have a niche, you are so tied up. Like it's then if you make videos that aren't that, people are like, "What are you doing? This is not. This isn't you." Which is like why I'm grateful for vlog content because then I can do whatever fuck I want, and it's a vlog like. It's very versatile, and if you ever, if you are in a jam like me, I recommend vlogs. Like, people fucking love vlogs. I fucking love vlogs. I love. I'm just happy. I'm in a good place creatively. <laughs> I've been thinking about it recently, though. I do kind of want to return to that sketch style of video. I think I completely like discarded it and dispelled it in a way because that was I associated it so much with my comical. <laughs> comic past but really you can recycle it and you can use that that form and that style for so much else so I'm, I'm kind of I'm thinking about doing that again it's also that I don't need to suppress my past like there's no point of that like especially when like little me did have good she did have some bloody good ideas so you know the future is bright I think I'm really gonna start like upping my game especially because now season two is over I have so much time I'm a second year university student, so that's actually not true, but for vlog takes up an awful lot of time and I think people do not understand how long it takes. I'm currently editing my Menorca vlog, which is an hour and a half long raw. Because Chris picks up my camera and films me. I'm like, babe, I love you, but you film five minute clips. Why? And that takes an awful long time to edit. Think about it. I need to watch the entirety of that hour and a half to cut it. I mean, I need to watch whatever I cut, we'll go down to 40 and we do that again and again and again. It takes like... I don't know, for five hours to edit an entire vlog and I've been doing that for weeks. It's hard. But the fact is, you guys appreciate that. I have never had so many of you get in touch with me on Twitter, on Instagram, in the comments, being like, I love your videos, you're talented. I got a comment like yesterday, which was like, OMG, how are you so talented? And I was like, I shit my dad because I was like, I was like, that inhumane noise is my level of excitement. <laughs> but it really warms my heart and I just never want you to think that it's not appreciated. Like, I, it means everything to me and it cheers up my day and sometimes I screenshot it and send it to my friends if it's particularly lovely, but that's not the point. So just thank you for all of your love of late. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, I'm sad season two is over of the vlog, but I think a vlog content was like the best decision I made. And I'm going to try and make more films. So I have linked my film channel down below and at the end if you are interested. Because I do love my film channel, I won't lie to you. I think that is my honest chat about YouTube branding and creative freedom. I had this video idea for a while ago, but I think now is the appropriate time to have done it. And I'm bloody glad. I'm bloody glad I did it. So yeah, that is how I'm feeling about YouTube. I'm actually feeling very positive. Future is bright. Very excited. I have a lot of video ideas that do sort of fall into this like new young women content category. If you're a guy, yeah, you also like it. <laughs> young people content. Uh, I changed my channel name. It's like sky, it's like sky, I went like scary. <laughs> it's exciting and scary at the same time. Angelina's one of my middle names. I have two. That's kind of why I like hyphen it sometimes because I think it sounds cool. Um, besides the point, Emma. <laughs> So yeah, like, subscribe and all that jazz, and I will see you guys very soon. I am going to try and go back to the Tuesday, Thursday, 8 o'clock upload time, or Sunday 8, but 
I will let you know on Twitter and it'll come up on my Instagram story. If you miss a vlog, I am gonna Instagram story the shit out of my life. So you can go over, where is it, it's over here. You can go over here to go check that out. But yeah, I'm in a good place. I'll see you guys soon. Uh, it's... I tweeted this the other day. Hi, my name's Emma and I'm the idiot with her hair stuck in her lip gloss. Ugh.